Hi guys, Tim here with another Flipper Zero video. This one we're going to test the RF module, the CC1101 module, and it comes with this antenna when you purchase it. Um, I got mine off eBay, um, but generally you can get them at most places. We're just going to temporarily connect it up with some of this um, connection leads. These are just male to female. Um, I think they're just used for Arduino. We'll then wire them into here. Um, we'll test the RF power coming out of the flipper with the hack RF in the internal mode and then the external mode. We'll test it as well and we'll show the difference in power. Uh, the added advantage of this versus the internal module is you can increase the gain by adding an external antenna. This antenna is an example of a larger antenna. I can't even fit it into the frame. This is a Nagoya NA771 antenna. Uh, most likely this is a clone of a Nagoya. It's not actually a real Nagoya. And if you attach this onto here, of course, because you've got much better antenna this is tuned for the right frequencies as well for 430 megs um, you'll have more gain come out of that and you should be able to go a little bit further distance and then when you want even more distance you can use one of these now I recommend do not use one of these without an output filter to output the RF signal this is what's called a power amp or a PA uh, RFPA and it's quite wide band I can't remember off the top of my head exactly the frequency range but it's quite large the problem with it being quite large of a wide band is it also amplifies spurious frequencies so if the sine wave coming out of this is not exact you'll have harmonics coming out of this and that means that you could be transmitting on a frequency above the actual frequency of this as well as the frequency of this and you could cause interference to other services including emergency services and that's not good <laughs> we'll get started into the hookup essentially we're just going to connect all of these willy-nilly and then we're going to follow this wiring diagram here and um, if we have a look at this wiring diagram we can actually see that everything is connected via the SPI interface and then of course 3.3 and ground uh, I would not recommend running these on 5 volts they're gonna die <laughs> And on our flipper zero, we're going to go up to sub gigahertz, and then if you go all the way down the bottom, radio settings, you can see that there's module internal external. Because we don't have the external module connected, we can't select external. It doesn't change other than internal. But then when we've got this connected, we can actually change between internal and external. So let's wire this up. We're going to start with pin one, pin two, pin three, pin four. The pins are actually numbered one, two, three, or one and two are numbered, seven and eight are numbered. But you can guess the rest. We've got five. Six, seven, and eight. So they're all connected on there. Now we just need to follow this diagram. And it's easiest if you hold it this way because that's the way it is in the diagram. So pin one, which is this blue violet one, needs to go to ground, which is my orange one on here. 
So we find ground, which is pin 11. And that would mean pin 2, which is going to be a yellow, goes to 3.3 volts. Just like that. <coughs> now pin 3, added advantage of putting them all in order on this ribbon, means that I can just go pin 3 here without having to check there constantly. Your results may differ. Pin 3 is pin 6. Pin 4 is going to be pin 4, which is like pin 4. Pin 5 is going to be the one, which is now 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 5. Pin 6, which is now dark blue, pin 2. And that means pin 7 goes to pin 3. Pin 8 doesn't go to anything. And of course, I've got nothing on the brown wire. Alright, now to test connectivity. First we're going to hook up this antenna. I don't want to accidentally transmit without an antenna connected. It shouldn't matter with this, but if you were running this without an antenna, you'd probably end up cooking this due to high SWR on the output. Uh, SWR stands for Standing Wave Ratio. I'll put a link in the description if you want to know more information about SWR and what it means for an antennas and amplifiers. Uh, but we'll go over to here. If we go to sub gigahertz, radio settings, we've now got an external option, internal, external. We're just going to go back to internal for the moment. We'll go to saved. We'll find a Tesla thing. That's ready to go. We're going to start the hack RF. And we'll go down to receive audio. And I'm going to turn these gains all the way down zero on that one on the amplifier. Zero and let's go about six on that one. We need to go to frequency. We need to specify the frequency that's on the hack RF for this file, which is 433. Decimal 92. Done. Now if we hit this transmit button, we should see a signal come up on the hack RF. It should be fairly quiet because I've turned all the gains down. There you go, there's a signal right there. Let's turn the gains down a little bit more. It's a little bit lower. It's just about to show up. And there you go, it's very, very minor on that one. Now if we go to radio settings, external, back up to our Tesla, hit the play button, there's a lot more signal there. I've turned the gains all the way down on this and it's still showing quite strong. The external module is working and we can see the higher gain that we're already getting from this external antenna. Okay, so this here is my power meter and on the scale it doesn't go very low power. The lowest it really shows up is about 100 milliwatts. Um, and of course this outputs probably closer to 10 milliwatts. Um, so this is not going to show up on here using this PA I can have it show up about one watt but here's the fun thing about digital so when I push this transmit button you'll see that the signal's not exactly completely a constant carrier if it was constant carrier that would be a continuous line straight down whereas this one here you can see it's broken up into sections and that is because oh, I'm not 100 percent sure why it is with the, the tesla signal but a lot of digital signals they'll actually split it up let's take um, dmr radio for example uh, voice and data can use what's called uh, shit I can't remember what it's called but it's 
uh, dual time slot and so what it'll actually do is it'll split let's say you have data no data data no data data no data time slot 1 and then time slot 2 will actually be here in the opposite order so no data data no data data so that's time slot 2 and these are actually 28 milliseconds 28 milliseconds gaps and so because of this is not continuous this, a power meter like this one cannot keep up with that 28 millisecond gaps and so it'll actually show a lower power out or power out than what is actually being transmitted um, this 28 milliseconds is called a duty cycle so this will be 28 milliseconds off and it's called duty cycle a 50 percent duty cycle because the timing is exactly the same and so in theory the output power is about half of what's being transmitted so when we go back to here on our tesla signal you can see that it's probably closer to being uh let's say 80% duty cycle thereabouts just guess off the top of my head now I'm not sure if that's because the signal is repeating that many times in just very quick succession or it actually requires all of those I haven't um, delved into the output on the data file now so even though my power meter can show one watt using the power amplifier it's probably actually closer to putting out 1.2 watts or, or even 1.5 watts purely because of that data switching so much this moving coil meter can't keep up with it um, so there a little bit of radio theory there in that video along with uh, testing this RF module and I'm quite pleased with it Later on down the track we can make up an adapter board to plug into the top here just like the NRF or the ESP32 modules that I've got, ESP8266 modules. Uh, if that's something you want to watch me build please put a comment in the comments below and um, we'll look into building it. I'll also include a soldering tutorial if you're interested in that sort of stuff as well. But yeah, that concludes the video. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, hit that like button if you found it useful or anything like that. If you want to see more content like this, hit that subscribe button. And uh, if you've got any suggestions or anything like that, please put it into the comments below. Uh, all that sort of stuff helps this channel. Um, I'm, I'm trying to get it up off the ground. I did spend a little bit of time offline for a bit there, uh, not producing any content and uh, just starting to get back into it now so yeah feel free to uh, browse my other videos and uh, thank you very much for watching